You have lots of tasks that you need to do every single day and sometimes it's hard to figure out which ones you need to do first, how you should stack them up, how you should fit them into your schedule. And so today I wanna to talk about prioritization. So I'm gonna talk about three things today. The first one is going to be a prioritization matrix. Some of you may know it as like an Eisenhower matrix. If you're new to it, totally okay, we're gonna talk about it. After that, I'm gonna get into some tools that I use to help me prioritize and kind of juggle things and make sure that they're uh, you know in my schedule and make sure I check them off, that kind of thing. And after that, I'm just gonna talk about some general kind of tips and principles, other things that really didn't fit in the first two categories. The first thing I'm going to talk about is an Eisenhower matrix or a prioritization matrix. Um, these exist in a lot of different forms. For example, in work, uh, people use them to prioritize tasks at work. I use them, uh, as a student, I use them for homework and how to study for tests and things like that, just to make sure everything is in one place and I can kind of gauge how important things are. So how it works, and I'll show a picture probably like right here or something like that, so maybe I'll scoot over. Um, how it works is there are four quadrants. And so in each quadrant, they uh, we break them out on axes of uh, importance and urgency. So I think either, I can't remember if either the X axis is importance and the Y axis is, is urgency, something like that. But either way, it doesn't really matter because they'll end up in the same place anyway. Um, and so we put our tasks into each of these quadrants dependent on how urgent they are and how uh, important they are. And it's really important to understand what I mean here when we're saying important and urgent. So urgent just means it requires your immediate attention, right? So things like even a notification on your phone or like getting a text, that is something that can be urgent because they usually like divert your attention. They require immediate attention to them. Importance is just on a spectrum of like, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how much does this task does this thing help you achieve your goals so for example a text message if I get a text message from a friend that's very urgent right because I would I would be inclined to respond to that because I get the notification I want to respond whatever however it's not super important most of the time right this um, for example like if they're just asking if I want to go out to eat later tonight that can probably wait right because it's not super important um, it's not something that's helping me achieve my goals. So if my goal for this semester was to get, you know, I want all A's, right? Going out to dinner doesn't necessarily help me achieve that. So it's probably something I can postpone. And so that's how you kind of put things into each of these quadrants is think about how urgent is this, right? So does it require immediate attention and how important is it? Does it help me meet my goals? So if you haven't done this before, then I highly encourage you to look at maybe your tasks for this week or maybe your tasks for next week and figure out where do they go in this little map, which of the four quadrants. And we deal with each of them in in a different way so things that are both urgent and important those are things that we want to do right now that's where we want to put you know our focus that's where we want to put our most effort things that are urgent but not important we can avoid these right so these are like notifications um, I don't know phone calls anything like that where it's like this could be urgent um, because I you know I have to put attention on this right now however it's not important because it doesn't help me get done what I actually need to get done this doesn't further me and my goals or anything like that this isn't to say you should just ignore all texts from everyone and just like you know never have any social interaction uh, I'm just saying that when you're in you know work mode from 8 to 5 9 to 5 whatever you do then you can probably put these things off they are not super pertinent to what you're doing things that are you know high uh, impact or high importance but low urgency these are things that you need to schedule right so it could be oh next Thursday I know I have this big presentation make sure that this gets on your schedule early and that you have it in front of you so that you can prepare for it right so if it's not urgent but it is important then put it on the schedule lastly is the easiest category it's something that's not urgent and it's not important you should just delete it right you should just get rid of it it's not something that you have to do it's not important doesn't really add a ton of value you can just delete it and that's it it's super simple that's the Eisenhower matrix that's the priority matrix super easy again I highly encourage you to try it and check it out for yourself the next thing I wanted to get into is some of the tools that I use to make sure I actually do some of the things that I'm trying to prioritize some of the things in my checklist my favorite so far has actually been just the traditional checklist um, I don't know if you can you know, see this clearly. Uh, I use one uh, by a company called Ugmonk. Uh, it comes with like a nice little stand. Definitely more expensive than probably it's worth, but I really like it. All I do is I write down you know, all the things I need to accomplish in a day, and then I have like a little status bar next to them, and I can just check them off when I've done them. This for me is really efficient and really effective because it stays right by my desk, so it's pretty much like within you know foot of my face for most of the day. And so anytime I'm at my computer, if I look over, I can immediately see all the things that I need to do which is a really you know one of the overlying principles that I would say is very important is things that are on your priority list as high priority these are urgent and important you should try to make sure that they're you know in your view or in you know like your space as much as possible so whether that's putting them on your phone screen and just like being able to look at them and remind yourself or it's doing something like a to-do list where I have I keep this on my desk and it's in front of me all the time 
Another thing I really love to use is Notion. Um, I use Notion because it's a great, it has a great little like task board feature um, where I can kind of drag things over. How I separate mine, and I'll probably show like another, I'll show another video or screen recording right here. Um, what I like to do is I break it up into four columns. So things that are like not started, things that are started, but I haven't gone very far, things that are almost done and things that are done. And so when I prioritize for the week or I write down all of my assignments for the week, I make sure they all get on this kind of task manager board. And then I will be able to like drag them over as I go. And this just helps me keep track of how things are going and progressing in the week and make sure that I actually get done everything I need to get done. So I use that again in conjunction with like my to-do list. And this just makes sure that everything that I did prioritize and did put on my schedule gets done throughout the week. The last thing I want to talk about, I just have two quick little principles that I really like um, and I like to you know, apply to different things. So I felt like I should talk about them. The first one is the 80-20 rule. Some of you might be familiar with this, but it comes from this uh, theory that 80% of the value comes from 20% of the effort of the work or the work or in another setting maybe 80% of the value uh, in a company comes from like 20% of the workers um, th again this isn't true in like all cases this is mainly just like a heuristic um, just to kind of like help you wrap your head around things quickly but I found that it's really effective to figure out what are what is the 20% uh, in my in the task that I'm doing. So for example, me, if I'm studying, I know that 80% of the value or 80% of the stuff that will maybe be on the test or 80% of the uh, stuff that will help me complete a certain task comes from 20% of the effort that I'm putting in, right? And so you have to be very smart and selective about what actually matters most and how can I spend more time focusing on those things? How can I figure out what those things are? Learning a language is a really great example of this. I see speaking and like conversing with someone else in the language or even messaging someone else in the language, that is the 20%. I know that if I focus on that little 20%, I will, you know, exponentially increase the value that I'm that I'm getting out of that or exponentially increase, you know, the speed at which with I'm, I'm, I'm learning a language. And you can just take that and kind of extrapolate and apply that to different things. The last thing is, and there are some conflicting opinions on this, but the eat the frog principle, most people have heard of this. It's just doing, you know, the most difficult thing first or figuring out what's the biggest, uh, you know, bite that you can take of this thing and do that first. Um, there's some conflicting opinions in the sense that some people like to do um, a bunch of little things first and it kind of helps you mentally thinking, oh, I'm like checking a lot of things off my checklist instead of maybe having to spend, you know, hours and hours doing the one big thing and never getting to check anything off your checklist. This one really depends. I prefer like the eat the frog method. So whatever is most difficult, I like to do that first just because then I know it's out of the way and I know I'll blow through all of the smaller tasks. But again, this really comes up to you. Figure out which one helps you and then I would just stick with it. Whether you like to do the first thing, you know, the hardest thing first or whether you like to do it last, um, that's really just a personal preference. And that's it. That's all my thoughts on prioritization.